Hi, my name is Sally French. I'm a liaison librarian at Queensland University of Technology. A few years ago, I heard Brian Nosek from the Centre for Open Science talk about registered reports. I got very excited by this because this type of research publishing can nudge behaviours in a positive way. So here we have the research process. And as you know, the rewards for research come after publication. With all going well, your research is cited by others, which counts towards offers of collaboration, grants and promotions. But first, you have to get through the pain point of peer review. There's three things about this. Firstly, having a paper rejected is common, and if you're lucky, it will only mean more work to make the paper suitable for publication. However, if there's a flaw in the study design, it means time, money and effort have been wasted on conducting research that can't be utilised properly. Secondly, there's how we've tied career advancements, advancement with publication. We've inadvertently encouraged questionable research practices like salami slicing, not sharing data, p-hacking and harking. Of course, not everyone is doing this, but it's happening enough for there to be a crisis of reproducibility, enough to damage the credibility of scientific research. Additionally, there's a bias in publishing. Journals want to share stories that interest us, and we humans like novelty, narrative, we love a clear or positive result. So we see fewer articles that test or reproduce existing research that aren't telling a full story or that have a null or negative result. But there is an elegant solution, which is to move peer review here, prior to data collection. This is what registered reports about. At a stage one review, the reviewers look at the validity of the research questions and the thoroughness and quality of the study protocol. If the paper meets high scientific standards, it is then in principle accepted for publication by the journal. This is before the research is carried out, so it deals with publication bias towards novel, clear or positive results, because at this point the results are not yet known. There is another striking difference between conventional peer review and a registered report stage one review. And that is the process is more constructive and collaborative. With registered reports, reviewers' comments help the authors to improve their research while it's still possible to make changes to their study design before they start collecting the data. So once the study is performed and the final article submitted, the reviewers from stage one return to check if the original protocol was followed. And if it was, the paper will be published. Has it made a difference? Well, yes, publication bias does appear to be addressed. Registered reports are at least three times more likely to report null or negative findings. There are some other positive aspects too. We have an example where at Cortex Journal, the acceptance rate for stage one reviews is 90%, double that of conventional articles for that journal. Registered reports are highly cited, on average exceeding the impact factors of the journals in which they are published. And all major publishers now include at least one journal that offers to publish registered reports. Reviewers have responded enthusiastically to registered reports. The retention rate of reviewers between stage one and stage two reviews is close to 100%. Now, registered reports suit hypothesis-driven research, but they do not suit exploratory research, and there are a few other conditions which make pre-registration not a good fit. But overall, registered reports reward good science. They help with valuing research that's testing predictive models, not just research that's generating new discoveries, and that helps to address the crisis of reproducibility, which in turn contributes to improving the credibility of research evidence with the public, which I think 
is a worthwhile thing to do. So thank you for your time and attention. And if you're interested in finding out more, I'd recommend searching for the Centre for Open Science or the Open Science Movement. Cheers.